We did an interview with uh, one of the victim's close friends who told us that she'd had a conversation with a victim and the victim had reported that she was to meet with Officer Chapel that night and that he'd instructed her to bring her money because he'd recovered some of her money and could compare serial numbers and hopefully recover some for her. I don't envy them that task. One week after the crime, Officer Chapel was called in for a second round of questioning. If I'd have ever, if I'd have ever had the slightest thought that I'd be sitting here tonight talking to you about a murder. I'd have stayed, I'd have stayed out there. Chief Laddie talked with Chapel in the police station for hours, hoping he could give them some information that would point the blame elsewhere. He could not. There are no other suspects at this point. It was during the course of the interview, uh, probably about two hours into the interview, uh, that Investigator Burnett uh, came into the room and informed him that he was being charged with this crime. Chapel became an enemy of the law he had sworn to uphold. He reacted by uh, slumping, uh, sighing, and uh, began to talk about uh, the fact that he knew there was no bond for a murder charge, an armed robbery charge, and he'd probably be in jail for a long time before he could prove his innocence. That's most, that is overwhelming evidence. All I've got is what I know happened. And that's not going to do me any good. I don't want to say I have no alibi. I have nothing. Nothing would make Laddie happier than if Chapel could prove he was innocent. But friendship must take a back seat to justice. The chief knew what he had to do. Chapel was relieved of duty and told to turn in his gun and his badge. It was important to treat this case like any other. Only the evidence could prove whether or not Chapel pulled the trigger.